Hey, what's up, everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. And today we're taking a look at two brand new metering plugins from Sonable called True Balance and True Level. True Balance here on the left is something that will help us get the overall tonal balance of our track or essentially the EQ balance of our track to a certain target, which we can define by some of the presets here, or we can actually bring in some reference tracks and make those as targets. We're going to do all of that in a second. But essentially, this green line is what our track actually is and this gray line is our target and we want to make sure that our balance or eq line here fits inside of that gray line to get it closer to whatever our uh, preset target was it also gives us information about the stereo width and correlation down here or phase correlation down here at the bottom and it's all adjustable in terms of three bands double clicking on anything will set it back to the middle i'm just going to leave it on its default for now so essentially you have lows, mids, and highs. Generally, when you're doing mixing and mastering on this level, you're doing sort of broad stoke, stroke stuff. So that makes sense as there's only three bands. You don't need any more. If you're doing more, then you probably need to really get into the nitty gritty of your project to change some things. Okay, so true level will help us get to a preset or determine target loudness and a certain dynamics range. As usual, we've got a bunch of presets up here at the top, including things like SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, etc. And then we also have a number of dynamics references in terms of genres. And then we can also, again, bring in some reference tracks. That being said, both of these plugins work really great at helping you get to your desired goal by giving you actionable feedback in real time. We're gonna start with True Balance because I wanna get my tonal curve right before I start to worry about target loudness and dynamics. So this is the track we're working with, and I wanna say before I play it that I know it doesn't sound great. That's the point. We need to use True Balance and True Level to get it to where we want it to go so it can't be already there to start. that's essentially just a construction kit from single makers if you like this type of style i'm going to leave a link to the pack in the video description those are just the loops for the drop all put into the project at negative 8 db and i didn't change any levels of anything else that's just the way it sounds out of the gate so if we're thinking about the true balance here and we're just using the universal preset you can see that my highs are too high my mids are too low and my bass can use some work as well and you can actually hear that. I mean, I hope you can hear that anyway, right out of the gate when I play that to you. Especially the, the high end, it's just really, really harsh. So this all makes sense. As I said, we can come in here, this is sort of electronic, and you can see that the target tonal range has changed, and we're actually way above that in uh, the general electronic sense in that high range. And uh, the lows or the mids here have come a little bit closer, but the bass still needs some work. What I want to do is come back into that sample pack and bring in some of the mixes as Single Makers did outside of the one that I'm using. So this is called the Slap House Hitmaker 2. Comes with five construction kits. I'm using kit three. So I'm going to take kit one, two, four, and five because they're all the same genre and they're all mixed really well. And that's where I want our track to end up. So what I'm going to do is just click and drag and drop that right into there. And it's going to load those reference tracks for me. Now. As soon as I do that, you'll see that it's now using that, and we can actually see the tonal balance of those. Those are all color-coded very helpfully, and it's not using this one anymore. The, the gray target range is an average value of everything, plus or minus a few decibels, and it's essentially because you don't want to get too granular with it. We'll, we'll try to aim for somewhere in the middle here, and if I flip back, you'll see that those go away. We're not using those, and I can come back. I can click on any one to turn it off or turn it on. And I can also flip right here to remove anything as well. And just drag and drop is a great way to bring it in. So let's go ahead and play it again and see what we got. So again, it's pretty much the same scenario. The highs are way too high. I mean, I mean, technically we're in the range, but I want to get a little bit closer. So when all of these tracks, let's say we're in a DJ mix and we're mixing them together or we're listening to them in an album, they sound like they belong together. And that's the goal here. What I'm going to do is come back into plugins and I'm just going to come into Isotope and come into Ozone 10 equalizer. And I'm going to put it in front of the True Balance. True Balance, by the way, is on my master track. 
and I'm gonna pull this up. And what we're gonna do is just make some sweeping changes. Now, I don't remember if I've already said this, but this is not how I would do it. This is just me showing you how to take the information provided here and make some actionable decisions and how to get closer to the goals that we've laid out inside of True Balance. I would probably go in and start mixing things a little bit better. As I said, these are all just the same volume right out of the, the loop pack. So this isn't how I do it, but I can show you how to get started using this information inside of True Balance. The first thing I'd want to do is come in and just without even playing it, you know, look around, we're around, you know, what's this, between five and 10K, maybe around 8K, there's a big hump. So just take this and put it around 8K and bring it down a little bit. And then I can take this third one and, you know, between right around 500 is at the bottom of this trough. So if I just take this, put it right around 500 and then pull it up, okay? Maybe a little bit of a boost in the low end, maybe. Uh, we might have to change that filter type to something more like this. Because I can see like we're pretty close to where we want to be in the 20 hertz range. So let's just see what this does now that we have that EQ and what that green line does now that we've made those sweeping changes. Okay, so now you can see that the green line is very close to the center, which is the average of the four tracks that we have here for reference. And let me bypass it. Just listen to that high end and how much better it sounds to the ear. I'm also getting a thumpier presence from the mid range because we're boosting that pretty high over there. Now, again, I'm going very big with these changes just to give you a very clear idea of what we're doing. Perfect. Now, another cool button is this balance check. If I hit that, it's actually just gonna tell me, yo, this all looks good. And that's exactly what we're looking for. If I turn this off and then run it with the balance check on, It actually isn't going to tell me that I'm out of line because I'm actually pretty close. And that's because we have four different reference tracks on here. Maybe if I brought them down, uh, as soon as I've done that, you'll see that it says uh, you could reduce the level here by not only is it saying, you know, reduce the level here, but it's saying by negative 1.5 decibel and you'll be in the range. <laughs> And you saw that one kind of flip back and forth as well. And it's taking the average of everything. But just know that uh, this balance check is absolutely phenomenal. There's also, uh, and let me pull these back on. There's also a mono check. So if I hit that. Let's turn my uh, EQ back on. It's telling me that the width uh, looks good for the lows and the correlation looks good as well. I actually think that the width in the mid range here is a little bit too much for me. So again, let's just say that it is, I can come into say Ozone 10 Imager or really any imager that you have. You can even do it with stock plugins in Ableton Live. What I'm gonna do is just add a third band here and probably do something similar. So 150 and 4K, you know, just so we can keep it very similar to what uh, or, or cross plugins rather, and then come into, nope, so it's not that one. It's color coded. So for this one, I want to reduce the width here and watch the width slider here and also listen to what it ha happens to the mix as I reduce the width. <laughs>
goes the dynamite, okay? In general, and again, this is a generality. I like to keep touching on this. None of this information is meant to be absolute. It's just in general, we kind of want lows to be very narrow, mids to be a little bit wider, and then the highs to be even wider than that. That's just a general rule. Doesn't always need to be followed, but just as something to keep in mind for people just getting into mixing and mastering, okay? So now that we have that, True Balance has helped us go from one thing to another. If I'm gonna just group all these, bypass, turn it on, turn it off, and let's see what we got. Sounds a lot better already out of the gate and True Balance helped get us there. Next, come up to True Level. Now for True Level, we can do a couple of different things. We're thinking about overall volume or loudness, and we're also thinking about dynamics. So we can throw a compressor on there for the dynamics, or we can use something like Ozone 10's Maximizer for loudness. And I'm just gonna put it after True Balance. And again, just like true balance, we have a level check. So when I play this and hit level check, it will give me points that I need to pay attention to. If we're using the Spotify loudness reference and universal instead of electronic, then we're, we've got some points of interest that we need to think about the peak level, which will be your ceiling. We've got to think about the dynamics seem too high, which just means we need more compression. And the peak level seems too high as well. Those are the same things. Uh, you'll see that we've got a list here. These are the same things here. We just got to pay attention to that. But what I'm going to do is instead of using the universal reference, what I'm going to do is just come in here to the samples again and dr drag in those same four tracks as references. Boom, now let's play it again. And you can see the crosshairs here. We're trying to get close to the crosshairs. So you can actually see we're behind there. If we don't wanna see those, we can hide them right here. But the idea is like, like let's get the crosshairs close to this red one, which is kind of in the middle. How can we do that? So to deal with the peak level, I'm gonna go negative one here for the ceiling. And I'm also gonna turn on True Peak here. Uh, negative one ceiling is a pretty standard thing for masters. Depends on where the master is going, if it's gonna be put on vinyl, if it's gonna be uh, transcoded into MP3. Again, these are later down the road, you can talk about that. But for our intents and purposes, using these reference tracks, negative one on the ceiling is doing a great job and giving us a peak level we're looking for. Next up, I wanna adjust the threshold until we can get this cross here closer to the middle of this vertical line here because the dynamics are on the horizontal. So the threshold will introduce compression and reduce the dynamics. And we're looking to get those a little bit closer to the middle here. Let's do that. So that's looking pretty good now. I'm also gonna use uh, Ozone's new soft clip feature. I'm gonna turn it on, just boost it up a little bit. And that's actually gonna give us some more perceived loudness. And that looks pretty good. So as you can see, our crosshairs are right where they should be in terms of loudness and dynamics, but we're still on the level check getting our warning signs. All we need to do is click this refresh button down here in the bottom left and let it play for a second. And as you can see now, we've got green checks across the board. Let's come in and just A, B, everything that we've done using true level and true balance, where we came from and where we are now. All 
All right, so there you go. That's how to use metering to get better mixes and masters. Specifically, we're using the metering bundle from Sonable. As I said, links in the description if you want to check these out. Highly suggest it. And just as another reminder, mixing and mastering are professions in and of themselves. So we've only begun to scratch the surface here, and I want to make that perfectly clear. That is not lost on me, but we have to get started somewhere, and I think this is a pretty good place to get started on using these types of meters to get better mixes and masters. Anyway, as usual, links for everything is in the video description. I'm Joshua Casper, and I'll see you in the next video.